Do you have the math skills to solve this simple math word problem? Well, hopefully you do, but uh, really there's only one way to find out whether you can get this right, and that is to try the problem, which is the following. A broken clock loses one minute every two hours. How many hours will it lose in a seven-day week? Okay, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator, but uh, we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 0.7 hours, B is one hour, C is 1.4 hours, and D is 2.3 hours. Now, if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, here is the problem. Now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give you a bit of a hint. It's not required that you do so, but I'm going to think of this clock as an old school clock with uh, minute hands and hour hands. Okay, so you might want to think of the clock in that manner, but it's not necessary. But uh, we do have a broken clock that loses one minute every two hours. How many hours, okay, I'm going to emphasize hours, will it lose in a seven day week? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is C, which is 1.4 hours. But uh, if you came up with one hour and 24 minutes, that is correct as well. And even if you got 84 minutes, that is right. However, the question is how many hours, not minutes, will the clock uh, lose in, seven, uh, in a seven day week? But uh, if you got 84 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and give you full credit for that as well. So if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus for your ability to solve a basic math word problem. OK, now, if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I am confused. Well, no big deal. I'm going to walk to the solution right now. But uh, for those of you that still have to take math exams, you might be saying, that's me, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I don't want to take any more math tests or exams. Well, I totally get that. And if you come across a problem and you don't know what to do, well, what should you do? Okay, well, if you have a multiple choice question, you got to at least take a guess, right? So a lot of you are like, yes, I am a certified professional uh, guesser. I know I was way back in the good old 1970s and 80s when I was in school, and I really wasn't paying attention to my teachers. They would give me a test. It was like 100 questions uh, long, multiple choice, and uh, I would be like, all right, my lucky letter for today is B, and I would just circle all the Bs, da, 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 and I would hope I would pass the test, and it never worked out that way. I would always get like these like 65%, but uh, probably some of you can uh, relate to me. Now, I don't want you to be a certified professional guesser, okay? Although it is very helpful to know how to guess on a math question because um, you really could help, you, uh, help yourself out big time, especially if you can eliminate some of the choices, right? So if some answers don't make sense, you're like, ah, this one doesn't make sense, this doesn't uh, make sense, and it comes down to two possible choices, well, that's going to help you pass a test. So don't feel bad about guessing, all right? Especially if you have to still pass test. But if this wasn't a multiple choice question, well, we're simply just gonna have to know the math. So let's go ahead and get into that, get into that right now. Okay, so here is a lovely math word problem. And what I'm gonna do is uh, tell you to use the rule of three. Now, this is my rule, but it's basically common sense, and that is read a problem at least three times before you start doing stuff. Now, a lot of people are like, I don't need to do that, Mr. YouTube Math Man. This is simple. I understand what's going on. And if you just read a problem once and then you start doing stuff, here is what typically happens. Okay, students will read a problem because they're in a rush and they'll go and they'll do a bunch of work and they'll be like, wait a minute, I think I'm doing this problem wrong. They'll go all the way back, read the problem again and be like, oh, wait a minute, I missed something. And then they'll go in this direction and solve the problem. Okay, so this is going to happen uh, frequently if you rush a problem. So really get yourself into kind of a discipline or a habit to slow your brain down, right? Just like, all right, what's going on? 
you know, absorb the information in the prompt, and most importantly, understand the question, right? So we uh, uh, are trying to determine how many hours, okay, not minutes, will this clock lose in a seven-day week? All right, so that is the first step. Uh, obviously, read the prompt, understand the question. But uh, to really solve this problem, what we want to do is try to model the information, okay? So when you're faced with a math word problem, modeling the information, which means kind of like visualizing it in some way, is very, very helpful. Okay, now it's not absolutely necessary that you do this, but I'm going to suge uh, suggest that you do so. And uh, the great thing about uh, visualizing or modeling a problem is that you can have, uh, you know, or basically you can do it in your own unique way. In other words, one person's model of this problem can look different than another person's, and they can both be equally effective. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and model this part of the problem right here, and that is a broken clock loses one minute every two hours. So I'm kind of thinking of a clock, an old school clock, because I guess I'm a bit old school. But here is my clock, and every two hours, so I'm just going to pick two hours on this clock. So I'm thinking like three to five. That's what just kind of came to mind. But I could have gone from 12 to two. It doesn't make a difference. So from three to five, for example, this clock will lose one minute. All right, so that's what I'm kind of thinking. Now I'm thinking to myself, all right, well, this is two hours, right? So in two hours, this clock is going to lose one minute. Now, is this really helping me solve the problem? Well, it might help you kind of identify, well, I got two hours, and I need to think about uh, this clock in terms of a day, okay? Because the question is saying what? How many hours will it lose in a seven-day week? So uh, I need to figure out how much time how many minutes or, uh, or how many hours this clock is going to lose in one day. So if I can figure out how much it's losing in one day and just multiply that by seven, well, I'll get the right answer. Okay, so how many um, hours in uh, is in one day? Well, hopefully you all know that there's 24 hours in one day. Now, uh, we have a two hour period of time here where a clock loses one minute. So how many two hour blocks of time do we have in a full day or a full 24 hours? Well, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's easy. Just take 24 and divide it by two. So, of course, that is 12, right? There is 12 two-hour blocks in a 24-hour period. And in every two hours, we are going to lose one minute. All right, so how much total time are we going to lose in one 24-hour or one day, uh, one 24-hour period or one full day? Well, there's 12 two-hour periods in 24 hours. So this, what I'm showing you here, is only one way to think of the problem. Okay, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is, uh, you know, you're really kind of making this way more complicated. I could just figure this out, one, two, three. Well, congratulations, that's excellent. But sometimes people get confused on, uh, you know, how to kind of see the solution or the next step. So I'm just kind of offering various ways you kind of think about you know, uh, figuring out how much time this clock loses in one day. All right, so we know that the clock is going to lose one minute for every two, uh, every two hours. So uh, in one full day is 24 hours, right? Or there's 24 hours in full, one full day. So in two hours, okay, how, how are we going to go from two hours to 24 hours? Well, we're going to multiply by 12. So from one minute to 12 minutes, we're going to multiply by 12, right? So it's kind of a convoluted way to kind of uh, show you that, yes, indeed, we're going to lose 12 minutes in 24 hours, okay, if we lose one minute every two hours. Okay, now this is um, actually, you know, I think more confusing than setting up a simple proportion. So let me go ahead and show you this, and this would be the recommended way uh, to set this problem up, in my humble opinion. So we know that the clock is going to lose one minute uh, per uh, every two hours, okay? So one minute uh, every two hours. This is the rate the clock is losing time, okay? One minute for every two hours. Now, a proportion is what we call, um, which is by definition, um, two equal fractions, okay? So here, let's just kind of get rid of the units of measure. We have one half, right? Now, if the clock loses one minute for every two hours, what we want to uh, determine is how many minutes is it going to lose every 24 hours. Now, this is a proportion, and I'm going to explain what a, a proportion uh, is in just one second. Matter of fact, let me just do it right now. A proportion, by definition, 
is two equal fractions. So if I have the fraction 1 half, what is another fraction that is equal to 1 half? Well, maybe uh, like 3 over 6, 4 over 8, 5 over 10, there is a ton of them, right? So here is a simple definition or illustration or an example of a proportion. It's one fraction equal to another fraction. Now, a property of proportions is something called the cross product. If we cross multiply, the cross products are equal, okay? So two times three is what? That's six, and that's equal to one times six, which is, of course, six. All right, so again, a proportion is two equal fractions. Now here, uh, now technically, we can say a proportion is two equal fractions, rates, or ratios, but let's go ahead and get uh, back to this problem. So we know that the clock loses one minute for every two hours. So we want to determine how many minutes it's going is it going to lose in a full day or 24 hours. Now we have to be uh, very careful with the units of measure here because I'm setting up one fraction that's equal to another fraction. And notice I have minutes in the numerator and hours in the denominator. Now let's just kind of think of this in terms of a simple proportion. So I have one half here is equal to x over 24. Now I don't know how many minutes, so I'm going to use a variable. So let's just look at this fraction this way. One half is equal to what uh, over 24? Now, of course, I have x over 24, but uh, x just represents a number. So if I said, hey, can you figure out what number goes right here? So one half is equal to what over 24? Okay, hopefully most of you are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's got to be a 12, because 12 or 24, if we, if we uh, reduce that fraction, it is one half. And that is fantastic, because 12, of course, is the right answer. We're going to lose 12 minutes in 24 hours. But what we could do here is solve this proportion, right? We have one minute over two hours is equal to X minutes over 24 hours. So we're going to go ahead and set up a proportion and solve for X. Okay, so here we have 1 over 2 is equal to x over 24. We're going to use the cross products and cross multiply. So x times 2 is 2x, and 1 times 24 is 24. And then using some simple algebra, we can solve for x by dividing both sides of the equation by 2. So x is equal to 12 or 12 minutes. All right, so I just showed you two ways we can determine how many minutes this clock is going to uh, lose in one day. Now that we have this information, it's going to be very easy to solve the problem. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, uh, I wouldn't stop this lovely video, but I need your help, okay? I need your help to help others, okay? What I'm trying to do on YouTube is I'm trying to teach math in a clear and understandable and interesting way. Okay, that is my goal. That is my passion. And, uh, you know, I was very fortunate way back in uh, college to major in mathematics. And that wasn't really my first choice. I kind of ended up uh, as a math major. That's kind of a whole separate story in and of, uh, in and of itself. But, uh, you know, studying math has been really, really uh, beneficial to my entire life. You know, obviously, I've learned a lot of mathematics, but it really helps you, um, you know, think in an analytical way, okay? And I think that's one great reason to learn mathematics is to solve complicated problems. And I really appreciated all my professors and all the years and decades of, you know, being in mathematics. And I want to kind of give back, right? I want to help others, but I can't reach more people unless I get your help. And the best way to help me on YouTube is to simply hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. Now, if you need, um, you know, real, you know, uh, significant or comprehensive uh, help in mathematics, if you're having a tough time, please do not give up on math. Okay, you can do this, but it's going to take time and effort. And most importantly, it's going to take a lot of great math instruction. So check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description below. And we're kind of talking, we're kind of talking about basic math here. So for those of you that want to relearn basic math, I got two uh, great courses that you can check out. The first is called my Math Foundations course. That is a quick little mini course of all the basic math stuff that we all forgot from elementary and middle school. And then I have my Math Skills Rebuilder course, which I cover basic math, but I get into a ton of algebra, geometry, and some other stuff as well. 
All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. And really not much to do now that we know that this uh, clock is going to lose 12 minutes per day. And the question is, how much time or how many hours is this clock going to lose in a seven-day week? Well, all we have to do is uh, take our daily uh, rate, which is, of course, 12 minutes per day, and multiply by seven to get the total time in terms of a seven day week, this clock is going to lose, right? So this clock is gonna lose 84 minutes. Now I'm working in minutes, but because I was listening to Mr. YouTube Math Man in terms of the rule of three, I know the question, okay, I'm focused in on the question, and the question is asking hours, right? How many hours, not minutes? So we need to um, convert minutes to hours. So how do we do that? Well, you know, there's a couple different ways we could do this. 84 minutes is the same thing as what? 60 plus 24. 60 minutes is what? Well, that's one full hour. So we have one hour and 24 minutes, or we can simply just take our 84, uh, not 80, 84 minutes and divide it by 60, right? So 84 minutes divided by 60 minutes because there is one hour and 60 minutes and we'll get 1.4 hours. Now, real quick, let me just, I just can't help myself for those of you that uh, um, don't know how to convert. So uh, convert units of measure, this is really important. So 84 minutes, what we're gonna do is multiply 84 minutes uh, times a conversion factor. Let me just erase this here real quick. So 84 minutes, we wanna get rid of the minutes and be left with hours. So there is one hour in 60 minutes. Okay, I need the minutes down here in the denominator because the minutes need to cross cancel. So that's why we're gonna end up with, when we multiply fractions, 84 over 60, right? And the units of measure that are left over is hours. Okay, so hopefully you got something out of this uh, video. And if uh, what you got out of this video was some uh, entertainment, or if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you know, I was really, really bored and, you know, you helped me kill some time. Well, that is fine as well. But here's the thing. If you really do want to learn math or improve in math and you like my videos, well, thank you for watching. That is fantastic. But uh, what you really have to do is practice problems on your own. That's the only way you really are going to get uh, better. So I encourage you to uh, stick with math. And if you like word problems, I post a ton of them on my YouTube channel. So hopefully you are a subscriber. All right. So with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.